This video introduces a new Layout Smart Mount RF Pro workshop. The first four labs in the workshop brings the students through the process of creating this LVS DRC Clean multi-technology switch module. Once the physical design is complete and verified for manufacture, in lab five, we perform RF Pro EM simulations to evaluate the overall electrical performance. Let me go into demo here. I'd like to demo two uh, key concepts from the workshop, Smart Mount and RF Pro. This is a completed layout for the module. It consists of a bunch of surface mount component parts that are all mounted on this, on this parent four layer substrate right here. But what's different is there's these two Mimic LNA amplifiers that are mounted into a cavity that's cut in the board between layer one and layer two. This is what we call, refer to multi-technology design. Smart mount enables us to put these multi-technology designs together very easily. Let's look how that's done. If I push down into the design for this LNA Mimic right here. This is what its design looks like. It has its own substrate definition, its own technology. But what you notice in ADS is under customized P-cell, there's something called smart mount P-cell here. And you can define a smart mount subtype as either flip chip, bottom mount, or multi-mount. Flip chip is if you're always gonna take the, take the device flip it upside down and say mount it onto copper pillars. Bottom mount is what we're doing in our next level assembly is, is the bottom surface is the, is the mounting surface. And then we're gonna bond wire to it or, or multi-mount. You don't care how it's mounted on the next level parent assembly. You could have two right next to each other. One of them that's flip chipped and the next one that's, um, that's bottom mount. Once you have this defined, and this can be defined either on a cell-by-cell -cell basis, or you can define it on a library basis. Once you have that defined, once you place the design into your parent assembly here to define how it's, how it's, how it's placed, you simply right-click, right-click on the design. You'll see two options, one that says mount subtype, in this case, since we had multi-mount defined, we can either mount it flip chip or bottom mount. We're mounting it bottom mount, or, or also mount layer. Mount layer gives you the options of what, whatever is allowable within your parent substrate definition, which layers you can, you can mount it to. In our case, as I described before, what, where I want to mount it to is on this layer PC2. This layer PC2 is a contiguous ground plane. This dielectric cutout right here defines an air dielectric that's cut out into the, uh, this, this carrier board between layer PC1 and PC2, layer one and layer two. So that's all you have to do to mount something like this I'm using smart mount. If I just switch to 3D view here, you can see the bond wires are hooked up. You can see it's mounted in onto layer two here. I just have layer two turned off, uh, so it's a little bit easier to see the mounting of the part. But you can see with just a few clicks, it's very easy to define a smart mount component and build a, a multi-technology design like this. Okay, now that we have the, the module designed, let's move over to RF Pro to run some EM simulations. Whether you've imported artwork or created an ADS, as we've done here, all the net and hierarchical component information comes into our Pro. So here you can see all, all our nets are here, as well as all our, all our hierarchical, let me just switch it to hierarchical view here, all our, all our components are also defined here. Again, if you've done, if you're using a third-party CAD tool and you've imported your database, all the same information is maintained in our pro. 
because it has all this net and component information, it's very easy to, to do what we call component partitioning. How do we want to treat a component? Do we want to simulate its layout view or do we want to simulate its electrical model? In this case, we're going to, we're going to run an EM simulation of this entire module right here from, from the laminate level geometry all the way down to the micron geometry through these bond wires to this mimic. But we want to stop here after this input matching network. We want to stop and define this transistor, this FET transistor, as a circuit component role. We want to extract it out of the layout and, and replace it with an electrical model. That's very easily done in our pro by simply right clicking. So here you see it's got a little schematic symbol. So it's already been extracted out and the, and the electrical model has been replaced. But if, for instance, we want to change a component role, the layout, just change a component role. And you can see now the FET artwork has been, the electrical model has been replaced with the FET artwork. Again, let's just go back here, change component role to circuit. And now we're going to simulate with the FET model extracted out. The RF Pro automatically puts in these four EM ports for you where the, where the electrical model is going to get hooked up. This also works through this, this component extraction, uh, also works through hierarchy. So let's let's just say you had a design like this, but you were you didn't have the you know the the internal circuitry of this chip. Let's just say you had a model that, that ended at these bond wire ports, as parameter model or, or whatever type model you have, right? In RF Pro, right? Simply, simply click the top level hierarchy for this part, change component role to circuit. And now you see that we've extracted out the entire entire mimic design em ports have been just been placed at the end of these bond wires and we're now using the model that's defined for the for the, for the top level mimic we're not going down into the transistors transistor of the part okay so we've we've run a simulation on this it's already complete of, of the of the entire module going down to the transistor level of the of the mimic uh, it takes a little bit over an hour on a uh, decently powerful uh, grid computer remember we're simulating you know from from this laminate level geometry down to the micron geometry of the mimic but once the simulation is complete we create a sub circuit of the design that, that looks like this. This block here contains all the all the um, all the S parameter data, all the field data, if you've stored field data for it, of the of the of your entire simulation, in this case of the of the module. You can see the components that you had defined as circuits are already placed into this sub circuit view. So here we have the two transistors, the single pole double throw switch, the bypass capacitors, those uh, attenuators, as well as this, this power amplifier module. What's really nice now is we can use that sub circuit in a top level design and just switch it back and forth between the EM extracted view and our top level behavioral view. So if I switch this to our EM Pro extracted view and I push down into it, you'll see we're just back down into the sub circuit that was generated from our Pro. And we can compare this with our original behavioral schematic simulation. Those results look like this. Go up. So, so this is our behavioral view. You can see we've got pretty decent switch isolation here, uh, pretty pretty good flatness in our in our band of interest. Again, this is now just a behavioral extraction. 
right? There's, there's no EM effects in these results. If I switch to our R of Pro EM extracted view, you can see that although we passed all our LVS, DRC, all our manufacturing checks, this is not a module that we want to send to manufacturing. This is why it's important to run EM simulations on, on, your, on your circuits, on your top level circuits. We can see that our isolation has gotten very poor. You can see our, our gain has gotten pretty, pretty bad. Again, this is not something that you want to send to manufacturing. You want to go through some design iterations here. Okay, one last feature of RF Pro I would like to point out. Let me just open RF Pro up here again. Is what's called um, net. I already showed you component extraction, but there's also something called net extraction and mesh domain op optimization. What net extraction lets you do is just define which nets and which components of a large design that you want to analyze. So let's say you imported a really complex mixed signal, uh, mixed signal board, but you only want to do an EM simulation on a small subset of those nets. It's really easy to do in R of Pro. So for instance, here's, here's three nets here that I want to analyze. You can automatically define the, the switch model here. So here's Here's ports placed for the switch model. That's done for you automatically, as well as, as these, oops, as well as these three I/O ports. So there, there's a port here placed, a port here, and, and an output port. What mesh domain optimization does for you is it creates a 3D mesh around your signals of interest. And it performs a virtual cookie cut. So you don't have to do an EM analysis of this entire board, all these grounds that are in here, all these different vias. It does this 3D virtual mesh domain optimization cookie cut. And what that enables you to do, whereas the top level EM simulation of this entire module took over an hour on, on the grid computer, on my laptop, just doing these, these three nets in this component took six minutes on my, on my laptop. So, okay, this, this wraps up the demonstration. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please contact uh, Keysight and thank you for watching.